Hello and welcome to Selective Preparation Power Reading Test 51. In this video, we will be looking at 10 questions, so we will get started on that right now. The first three questions are responding to The Last of His Tribe by Henry Kendall. So as you can see, this is a poem. Um, in the test, you would first read this poem and then go on to look at the questions. Question one asks, in verse 1, the man hides himself because. So in any reading based test, what you would do for questions is you would look for keywords. So here in um, question 1, the keywords are in verse 1. So this is telling us where to look for our answer. The man hides himself is the second um, key phrase because. So what we would do then is once we've found our keywords in the question, we would go back to the poem or the text to match for keywords in the text itself to find our answer. Because once again, in reading based questions, the answer to any question is always in the text. So the question told us to look in um, verse one. So let's look at verse one. He crouches and buries his face on his knees and hides in the dark of his hair. For he cannot look up to the storm smitten trees or think of the loneliness there of the loss and the loneliness there. <laughs> so if we match up keywords here, we've got hides. In the dark of his hair, for he cannot look up to the storm smitten trees. So we know he's hiding. And why is he hiding? For he cannot look up to the storm smitten trees. So he's hiding because he can't look at his environment. He can't look around him. He can't stand to look at his surroundings. So when we go back to the list of options for answers there, the answer that best matches what we found from looking at the text is A, he tries to avoid his surroundings. So as you can see for question one, the answer is A, because once we've matched up the keywords and phrases in the question to the keywords and phrases in the text, that is the answer that we get. Question two, in verse four, the man is, and then we have a list of options, A, hoping to leave, B, resting in the shade, C, looking at the rain, or D, dreaming of former lives. So once again, we look for keywords in the question, keywords being verse four, it's telling us where to look. And then the rest of the question is asking, what is the man doing? So we go back to verse four to find what the man is doing from, and find the answer that um, best fits what we found in the text. So verse four, for his eyes have been full with a smoldering thought but he dreams of the hunts of yore, and of foes that he sought, and of fights that he fought with those who will battle no more, who will go to the battle no more. Um, so just from looking at verse 4, we can immediately find keywords that match answers that, that we've given in the list of options for answers. He dreams. He is dreaming of the hunts of yore. So that is what he's doing. He's dreaming of the hunts of yore. And uh, for those of you who didn't know, yore means the past or long ago. So he is dreaming of the hunts of long ago. And um, if we look at our list of um, answers, we've got D, best matching what we found, which is that he is dreaming of former lives or dreaming of things that he did long ago. All right. And then question three, the feeling of sadness is brought on by his knowledge that. So this one doesn't, this question doesn't specify a verse. This is more of an overall question for the poem. And obviously that would mean you would have needed to read the whole poem, which you should have done um, at the beginning anyway, for when you're taking the test. So the feeling of sadness is brought on by his knowledge that A, the storm is coming, B, the hunts and battles are over, C, the animals are gone, or D, he is the only one left. So in this video, we've re uh, read verses one and four together. And just from that, we can um, piece together uh, what the answer may be. Um, but obviously in the test, you would have read the whole poem yourself. But if we look here, of the loss and loneliness in verse one, he's alone. That's a key word. And then in verse four, with those who will battle no more. So they're gone. They can't do anything of the of this type anymore. So he is alone and all that used to be is gone. So just from that, we can gather that the answer is 
he is the only one left, D. Okay, you might think that it might be B, the hunts and battles are over, but then we consider that in verse 1 he speaks of the loss and loneliness that he is suffering from now. And uh, that the loss and loneliness is his environment amongst the storm-smitten trees. So, for question 3, the answer is D. Oh, I said the first three questions were looking at the poem. Um, my mistake, we actually have the first four questions looking at the poem. Okay, so in which verse and which lines does the poet indicate that his weapon is no longer being used? So we would, um, the keywords in the question are verse, which verse and which line. So it's asking for specific verse and specific line. Does the poet indicate that his weapon is no longer being used? So what we can do here is we can look at the options that are given. Verse 1, lines 3 and 4. Let's go and look at verse 1, lines 3 and 4 to see if it tells us that his weapon is no longer being used. So this is verse, this is verse 1. And 1, 2, 3, this is line 3, and this is line 4. So for he cannot look up to the storm smitten trees or think he, think of the loneliness there. Uh, no mention of wef weapons there. So option A is out. Verse 3, lines 3 and 4. And the wind which drives up with the salt of the lakes have made him a hunter again. Once again, no mention of weapon there. Verse 2, lines 4 and 5. Um, lines four and five where the boomerangs sleep with the spear with the nullah the sling and the spear so here we've got mention of weapons boomerangs sling spear and we can assume that the nullah is also a weapon because it's in the context of other weapons so uh, for verse two lines four and five we do have a mention of weapons just in case, we'll look at question, um, option D as well, verse 4, lines 1 and 2. For his eyes have been full with a smouldering thought, but he dreams of the hunts of yore. No mention of weapons there. So we know with certainty that our answer is C, verse 2, lines 4 and 5. Okay, and then our next text is On the Darling River. Um, so once again, in the test, you would read this text before going on to read the questions and attempt to answer them. Um, but once you get to the questions, you of course refer back to the text again to make sure of your answers, which is what we will be doing in this video. What is the result of the Queensland rains? So again, we highlight or underline key phrases. What is the result of the Queensland rains? Right, um, and then we also look at our um, answers, our list of answers, possible answers, to see, to have more of a context for what we're looking for in the text. So the options are, um, the result is either the weather, that just looking at um, the question and the answer, that just doesn't make sense of itself, because how could rains be um be how could rains result in the weather when the weather and rain could be synonymous or b the depth of the river c the state of the passengers or d the departure time so we go back to the text and then if we just skim it let's assume that we've read it but because we're um answering a question we're going back and just skimming where um any of the keywords might have um, bean, right? So the Darling, which is either a muddy gutter or a second Mississippi, is about six times as long as the distance in a straight line from its head to its mouth. The state of the river. So the state of the river, that could be important because that could be the result, right? Or that is one of the options that we have, the depth of the river, that's related to one of the options is vaguely but generally understood to depend on some distant and foreign phenomena to which Bushmen refer in an offhand tone of voice as the Queensland rains. 
which seem to be held responsible. So to be held responsible means they are contributing to or, or are the cause of in a general way for most of the outback trouble. So just in this second sentence alone, we found all of the keywords that we were looking for. The Queensland rains being an obvious one from the question. And then um, we see that the Queensland rains are being related to the state of the river. Okay, where the, this statement here is saying that the state of the river is dependent on the Queensland rains. So from that, we know that our answer is B, the depth of the river. Question six, how are the ideas of the old timer described? So keywords here, ideas, old timer. And then our list of uh, potential answers are very interesting, um, able to be believed, few and only and on only a few topics, or D, listened to with amazement. So again, we skim the text, um, and this is why it's important that you read the text to begin with, because then you'd know where to look um, back to, because you'd already have a general idea of where everything is. So um, the old timer in question is, um, is here. So they get sick of being stuck in the same sort of place in the same old way. They grow weary of seeing the same old timer. So, like I said, important that you read the text because you know that the old timer was mentioned somewhere around here in this paragraph. So uh, keyword, the same old timer, drop his swag on the bank opposite whenever the boat ties up for wood. They get tired. So th we know they're tired of lending him tobacco. Okay, sure, that's not got anything to do with listening to his ideas. But here, the next bit, and listening to his ideas, which are limited in number and narrow in conception. So just from this sentence, this one sentence here, we found our answer. For the question so we know uh, just by linking the keywords and phrases so we know that the same old timer um, in question um, and the passengers are tired of listening to his ideas which they describe as limited in number and narrow in conception we have to remember that the question is asking for how the ideas are described so limited in number few and narrow in conception so narrow means not wide, not broad, so only a few topics. Few and on only a few topics. So C is our answer to question six. Question seven, what was the result of the crews running out of food? So again, keywords, result, the crews running out of food. So what happened when the crew ran out of food? We go back to the text. And once again, we skim back to where we would remember where the and um, where the mention of running out of food might be from when we read the text. Um, they had a cargo of rations, and the crew stuck to the craft while the tucker lasted. So tucker is food. When it gave out, when it gave out, they rolled up their swags and went to look for a station, but didn't find one. So we forgot to look. Well, I forgot to look at the. Um, list of options with you, sorry. So A, they turned back, B, the crew stayed with the boat, C, they lived on a wild game, or D, they set out to find a station. So let's go back up, back to the text again. Um, when it gave out, so when the food gave out, they rolled up their swags. So what, they, what did they do? They rolled up their swags and went out to look for a station. So the answer is, they set out to find a station. D from what we found in the text by matching the key phrases from the questions from the question to key phrases in the text. Now our last text is on environmental dangers and questions 8, 9 and 10 are responding to this text. So again you would read this and attempt and then attempt to answer the questions. Question 8. What is the result when the natural banks can no longer work effectively? Okay? So Keywords, result, natural banks no longer work effectively. Okay, so what happens when the natural banks aren't working as they should? And the, the potential answers are the animals drown 
all trees are damaged, water from the ocean breaks in, or D, the water dries up. So we look for key phrases, which are natural banks and no longer uh, work effectively. Um, and we skim the text because we would have read it already. So here we see natural banks can no longer function effectively. <laughs> no longer function effectively. Okay. Um, yep, so going back to the question again, um, no longer work effectively, what is the result? What happens when the natural banks no longer work effectively? And we see that the next bit is, in the dry season, water from the ocean breaks into these areas. So the cause and effect is, so the natural banks can no longer function effectively, and then the effect is water from the ocean breaks into these areas. And we can see that reflected in option C. So C is our answer. Water from the ocean breaks in. Question nine. Why is it almost impossible to control feral goats? So keywords, almost impossible, control feral goats. And we skim the text for these keywords. Okay, and then our list of potential answers is A, they thrive in tropical areas, B, they can exist on almost all types of vegetation, C, the animals breed very quickly, D, there are not enough ranges at work. So, sorry again, um, keywords, almost impossible, and control feral goats. And we skim the text. So, introduced with the arrival of the first fleet, the feral goat causes problems over a much wider area than the buffalo. Buffalo, <laughs> Early settlers use them for meat and milk. Um, today it is estimated that there are 7 million feral goats in Australia. They are found in approximately half the area of Australia. Control, control of feral goats. So that's word for word from the question. Okay, so we know that our answer is very likely to be in the next sentence or so. It, control of feral goats is almost impossible as they can exist on virtually all types of vegetation. So there we have our answer and it matches one of the potential answers given to us, right? So we know that the answer is because they can exist on almost all types of vegetation. The answer to question nine is B. And then our last question, what is the writer's purpose? <laughs> so keyword here, purpose. And you would have gleaned the purpose from reading the entire text, right? Um, so if we look at the options, they are A, to tell about the import, uh, importa importation of useful animals for the Australian environment. We know that can't be true because in just the last um, question, we know that um, the writer was describing the damage that the importation of useful animals caused. So it can't be the primary purpose or the only purpose, right? So while he did describe how certain animals were imported, um, he, the writer also described how they caused damage. So A is unlikely to be the answer. B, to explain how to cull feral animals. Did the writer explain how these animals could be controlled? He did not. So he described, he or she, sorry, um, the writer described um, the damage caused by the animals. Um, he, are, he They also described why control of such damage was quite hard. Um, so B is also unlikely to be the answer. C, to express concern for the welfare of domesticated animals. We look at the text did it talk about domesticated animals um it did not and then d to describe the damage caused and emphasize the need for more effort to be applied d is the answer because from the title alone environmental dangers we can tell that the writer is writing to express um damage caused by certain animals or we can um tell that that, would, that is what the text is about, right? And then when we go on to read the text, 
we can see that they have described damage caused by certain animals and also how they should how they need to be addressed so our answer is d okay so that's all of the questions and then here we get on to key points from this text key from this uh, key points from this text are that the answer can always be found the answer can always be found by matching keywords from the question to keywords or phrases in the text um, so implicit in this is the idea that the answer is always in the text. So that brings us to our second or maybe our primary point, which is always make sure to read the text carefully and to read all of it. Um, so that ends today's video on power reading. Thank you for listening up until now, and I wish you the best of luck with all your practice tests. Thank you.